this episode of Georgia Traveler, we're driving through Northwest Georgia. Looking for outdoor adventure, family fun, great getaways, and a local legend. We're going to start here in Ringo at the Georgia Visitor Information Center. Georgia Traveler is made possible in part by... Few places on earth match Georgia for natural beauty, and we plan to keep it that way. We're Georgia Power, a proud sponsor of public broadcasting. We're on so you can be Georgia Power, a southern company. And by supporters of Georgia Public Broadcasting. Thank you. I'm here with my new friend, Teresa. She's manager of the Visitors Information Center. And Teresa, we're looking for a scenic drive in the area. Do you have any recommendations? Well, Keeley, there's so many beautiful places in North Georgia, it's hard to pick just one. But US 27 would make for a good trip. Okay, great. Well, I think the first thing we'd like to do is enjoy the great outdoors. So where would you send us? If you're feeling adventurous, the Lookout Mountain Flight Park is in that area. A flight park. What kind of flying are we talking about? They've been teaching people to hang glide since 1978. Awesome, that sounds fun. The ordinary person loves to hang glide because most, or most people have always dreamed of flying like a hawk or an eagle. And man has dreamed of doing that since, you know, for centuries. You know, even Leonardo da Vinci was trying to invent a hang glider slash airplane. And now, after all these centuries and centuries, we have the ability just to do that. I think everyone should try to take advantage of it. The first step in hang gliding is getting the proper training. Knowing that we can't possibly learn how to fly by ourselves in a single day, we opt for tandem flights. An instructor will take each of us up in a glider after we learn the basics. We headed for the training hills. First stop, suiting up with the proper equipment. So these are your shoulder straps right here. Step through. These are your leg loops down here. You want to make sure your legs go through the leg loops. Then you pull it up like a dress or a pair of overalls. Something in the 36. Although there are gliders out there that can accommodate <clears throat> a full grown man, say, like me, didn't really make these for large size people. I don't, I don't. Tandem flight passengers are limited to 250 pounds. I'm gonna go jog a couple of miles. I think I can probably work my way into this. Yeah. And I'll come back because I, I really feel like I can do this. Five, ten pounds. Five and ten pounds? Next half hour, or so that'd be great. Okay. <laughs> Just to let you know, big dudes, we can do this, okay? But we may have to go and burn off a few pounds. You guys go ahead with the class. I'm gonna go ahead and jog a little bit, see if I can get this done. Anyone weighing more than 225 pounds might also require some special scheduling. So be sure and plan in advance. In case you're wondering, there is no weight minimum for the Discovery Tandem flight. If I teach you one thing today and you remember it, this is it. Okay. All that you have to do is relax. That's the number one key, all right? We're out here to have fun and relax and uh, this is pretty much it. I'm going to show you how simple it is to fly this glider and the fact that all it wants to do is fly, all right? We use hips to hands. Think about getting those hips to the hand or lead with the feet. Okay. Right? Correction. Before it turns into a big turn, you're making a quick correction. Just as we were wrapping up on the training hills, a storm moved in. But we were determined to fly, and soon, 
Our patience was rewarded. And then you're going to sign and then date. And then you're going to rip off this bottom portion. This is your license to fly. I'm excited. You should be. It's awesome. I am. I love Y'all been waiting so patiently. As long as you hold on to me, we got nothing to worry about. Okay. Lookout Mountain Flight Park took hold as a hang gliding hub, the largest in the world, because the long ridge that cuts through here, that's Lookout Mountain, uh, faces northwest. And so it's very common after a front comes through for the wind to blow for two, three, four days from the northwest. It's the predominant wind. And it hits the, the air hits the mountain and has to get up over the mountain. So it creates this wave of air. And basically what we do is we surf the wave and since it's a very long ridge, Lookout Mountain, we can surf the wave for miles and miles and miles. And so Lookout Mountain became very unique uh, for hang gliding for that reason. And also it's just so pretty. You know, you can fly out west, but it's nowhere near as pretty as it is looking down on this green valley. Uh, so it became popular because of that. And George has just been real welcoming to it. For some reason, George just seems like it's got adventurous people and they support this kind of place. <laughs> That was a lot of fun. She's a great pilot. <laughs> the hardest part is just the first step to say, I want to do it. But once they have that part done, uh, the flying itself, as you know, is not very hard to do. Uh, it's just a matter of relaxing and have a good time. It doesn't take any special skills, doesn't take any special strength. We have all sorts of people doing tandem flights with us and then people taking lessons. We've had, you know, people well into their 70s take lessons and we've had kids, you know, 10 years old taking lessons. I plan on flying when I'm 80. You know, there's no reason that you should ever get hurt in this sport. And there's no reason why you can't do it when you're 80 because there's nothing extreme physically about it. So what was it like taking Keely and me up today? Oh, it was a blast. You guys both did just outstanding. I can't say that enough. Uh, you both were really, really fun. So I enjoyed having you, but um, you know, just the excitement you guys felt, you know, and everyone gets the same thing. Woo, excellent, man. Thank you so nice much. Nice job, I that loved was it. wonderful. I loved it. When traveling on US 27 south towards Rome, where's a great place for us to stop and explore? Zion Farms is an interesting place. It's about halfway between Somerville and Rome. That sounds like a great place for some family fun. Just north of Rome is Big Texas Valley, home of Zion Farms. It's an equestrian center, a summer camp, a bed and breakfast, and a special events facility. But the mission and focus of Zion Farms has always been young people. We don't do anything here that I wouldn't love to do myself. But really the main thing that people come here for is the country air and the, um, the horses. And that's what I'm here for too. Have you ever had much riding experience before? You know, just summer camps, like okay. when you guys do. Okay. But that was a long time ago. Um, well, this is Chigger. And Chigger is a very flexible horse. He goes both English and Western, which okay. is what we have him in now. Okay, good. Um, he learns, or rather, he guides by direct reining. When we are riding Chigger, we have a rein in each hand. Okay. And our right hand controls our right side turns. Okay. And our left hand controls turns to the left. Okay. Yep. Up, oh, left hand. Up, left. left hand. There you go. Okay. And now your left foot, yep, is going to go right in there. And okay. then up and swing your right leg on over. Very nice. If it goes anywhere, you pull back towards your hips and you say, whoa. Okay. In your deepest, sternest mom voice. Whoa. Zion Farms operates 10 weeks of summer camps for riders of all levels and experiences. From beginners or foxes to hounds and to hunters, the riders with the most experience. Zion Farms as a whole is just a place that you come here and it automatically feels like home. It's Somewhere the kids can come and they can be themselves for the week. They get to bond with a horse, bond with a counselor, make new friends, and it's just awesome. I have some poor kids from all over the country, from um, really Connecticut to California and all in between. So kids that are horse crazy, you know, that have the passion to be with the horses and ride and be with kids that enjoy and love the same sport they do. And as a formerly horse crazy kid myself, I'm ecstatic to be out here on the trails with Chigger. It's been 
been a few weeks since we've been back in here. Because my last 10 weeks have been taken up with summer camp. Right. I'm, um, I guess I'm the acting associate director of the camp and then also the staple manager. Not all horseback riding needs to be by children. Mother-daughter camps and father-son camps are also available at Zion Farms, as well as guided rides like the one I've been treated to, although you'll need a minimum of two riders to sign up. We have enough trails around this place to keep you lost for hours. We offer really? two or three hour trail rides, and um, three hour trail rides include picnic lunches, of course. What we're coming up on, this would be Hammond Pond. And again, that's named after Rena's uh, side of the family. And then in front of us, you'll see her daughter, Rena Cooper Webb's house. Now her house, I understand, started as her playhouse when she was just a kid. And they kind of took the playhouse, turned it into her bedroom, and built the rest of this house up around it. <laughs> that's awesome. And it really is awesome. It has such a little picturesque gingerbread quality to it. I love it. Everybody here loves it. And that's costly. Hi, Costly. Costly is an ex-race horse. She's a thoroughbred racer. That's why she's Costly. Yep. Hey, Costly. You got so dirty, I saw you getting brushed off earlier. Yeah. Accommodations at Zion Farms include several charming cottages renovated from the original stables of the property. A chef-prepared breakfast is offered each morning at 9 a.m. When a family comes to Zion Farms, they can customize what they want to do for the weekend. They can do riding lessons, of course. Um, while the parents are here, they can arrange for spa treatments, and they have technicians that come right into their cottage. A lot of uh, girls come and do like girls' weekends, guys' weekends. We have special weekends where we do culinary classes um, and wine tasting classes where they're taught how to combine the wines with the foods, and all of it really in a very rustic but elegant setting. We've had people from 14 different countries here. It's been a variety of people that has, has really uh, enriched our lives and I believe theirs as well. If your aim is family fun or a family retreat, there is nothing like enjoying the country life of Zion Farms. We've always had people here that that's what it was all about, is to have a place. I mean, we don't need a place like this, but it's for the people that come. That was great, thanks for the tour. Anytime, Keely. It was awesome. If you're looking for a great getaway along US 27, you might try Cave Spring. Now it's a mineral spring located right in the center of town. Established in 1832, the town of Cave Spring retains the charm and pace of an earlier time. Just outside of downtown is Rolliter Park, 29 acres of beautiful land and historic buildings the perfect place for community recreation, historic preservation, and a great getaway. Our destination, the Hearn Inn. It was part of the old uh, Hearn Academy. It was first known, it named the uh, Baptist Manual Label School, and then became later the Hearn Academy. And this building was one of the dorms for the school which was situated here in Rolliter Park. Our first and only woman mayor of Cave Spring. She had a vision for this park, and she could see that we needed to work to save the, the school buildings. After painstaking restoration by the Cave Spring Historical Society, the Hearn Inn now operates as a bed and breakfast. We have five rooms that are available. We have um, three baths, two full baths, and a half bath. And um, there's also a living room, there's a sun porch, uh, there's a kitchen upstairs and downstairs. It's in a park, they feel like they've gone back in time, is what they say. They, they love it and they, we have many people who keep coming back. I think that this is worth coming to see just because of the history. You can sit on the porch and rock and, and uh, enjoy the park. The different seasons in the park are really special. The creek, people are friendly. They just, that's what you can expect. Did you guys grow up playing in the creek? Yes. yes. <laughs> In the 
of Rowlatter Park is Cave Spring, and for just a dollar, you can buy a tour of this unique natural feature. We have a um, wonderful cave here. It's a natural limestone cave, and in the back of the cave is a wonderful spring that puts out three to four million gallons of water a day. It serves the people of Cave Spring, the surrounding areas. Some water goes is, is piped to run. It is wonderful, good, pure water. Let's try it. Well, it's cold and fresh. It tastes good. Refreshing water and natural beauty are only some of the reasons to visit Cave Spring. We have a lot of antique shops, gift shops. We have some wonderful restaurants. Uh, it's a good place, it's a quiet place, but it's a wonderful place. And we have a lot, a lot of uh, picnic areas here in the park. So it's just a great place to come and spend the weekend uh, longer and swim and picnic and go in the cave and visit the shops in town. It's just the right distance to drive and enjoy the day, enjoy the staying overnight. This is just a beautiful place. It has a natural splendor to the little town, and I think it's taken an effort, you know, through the years to keep it that way as it was and to preserve it. As we travel along US 27 looking for a local legend, we come across a tradition, shape note singing, also known as Sacred Heart. Throughout Appalachia, there's a special style of singing that has something to do with shaped notes. To find out more, I decided to check out the annual Chattahoochee Sacred Heart Convention. Okay, it's no secret. Everybody knows I enjoy eating, but there's something else I enjoy as much, and that's playing my bass guitar. I never learned how to read music, and I play by ear. Well, I'm down at the Wilson Chapel in Carrollton, where there's a style of music called shape note singing that basically says you don't have to know how to read music to sing. Shape note singing is also known as sacred harp, after the songbook that is used. It relies on certain shapes to indicate pitches to singers instead of traditional round notes. There are seven tones, and, and the eighth tone is, is back to the octave, mm -hmm. but we're using the old English scale, mm -hmm. which is fa so la, fa so la mi fa, to complete the octave. So the mystery of the funny looking notes is solved, but I still wanted to find out why people learn to sing this way. Shape note notation is a, a system for teaching people to read music that was developed at the very end of the 18th century. The shapes are there to help you remember which syllable goes to which note. Um, and the idea is that you gradually just develop more facility with, with reading music that you've never seen before using this system. And it was a very effective system for teaching people to read music. How did, that, how did the, what's called the sacred harp uh -huh. book come together? Sure. Um, the Sacred Harp was put together by a couple of, of Georgia singers. Um, it was published first in 1844, and it contained songs from early America, from colonial days. Even though many of these songs are a couple of hundred years old, a few have remained popular even up to modern times. This is the first time this, this tune appeared in a book, uh, Amazing Grace appeared in 1829 and even though the words have been written in 1779. So this is the original version of the song. Oh, okay. Um, original key, <laughs> the original style and the shape notes, um, the whole works. another version of Amazing Grace, anything like that. Can I give y'all a hand? Y'all did phenomenal. That is beautiful. You know, and I realized one thing. I'm in the way. <laughs> you guys are a fan. You. Thank you. I appreciate you guys so much. Appreciate Thank you. you. more like surround sound. <laughs> yeah, I was surrounded by some good sound. I realized this is not something that I do well. So I'm going to sit back here. <laughs> in between singing and leading songs, I had the opportunity to visit the Sacred Heart Museum which is also located in Carrollton. 
The museum's collection features rare editions of early songbooks, as well as historical documents dealing with the Chattahoochee Sacred Harp Convention. Sacred Harp singers have a deep appreciation of history, but they also realize that it is essential to pass the tradition on, as I found out from a Shape Note family. What is your association with the Wilson Chapel? Well, um, my mom was a Wilson, and um, this um, is my great grand, my great great grandfather's. Um, he built the church, and um, my grandfather um, Henry Wilson sang here. He sang bass, and um, I've been coming here since I was a little baby. I just love it, and I'm uh, trying to pass it down to my little child. Okay, so Lori, this is one thing I really want to know. Tell me about the tradition of the picnic lunch. Well, it's some of the best southern food around. Um, there are a lot of wonderful good southern cooks here, and it's just a tradition that they always do. You always have your um, break at lunch and eat on the grounds. Y'all know it had to get to be this time, time to eat. I had a great time down here at Carrollton. You know, good food, some singing, got a chance to visit the museum. There's a lot going on down here. If you hadn't had a chance to experience shape note singing, you really ought to try it. But you know what? It's not the only thing going on in Carrollton. After this trip, these guys are going to be pretty hungry. Well, I know a place where they can feed their minds as well as their bodies. There's the Corner Cafe, which is the oldest restaurant in Carrollton. And across the square is Horton's Books, the oldest bookstore in all of Georgia. Tucked away in the corner of Carrollton's bustling town square is none other than the Corner Cafe. The name may be simple, but the sandwiches inside are anything but. I'm eating a deluxe turkey. Deluxe turkey. We have really unique sandwiches. That's what we're known for. We give them quirky names, which people seem to really enjoy that. Jellyfish is one very popular sandwich. There's no jellyfish in there, but... Uh, it's a chicken breast with bacon and uh, tomatoes and onions and cream cheese and Monterey Jack cheese and they're all, all our sandwiches are, are baked in a pizza oven so they're, they're all hot. The best bread in town. You gotta come and try it. The Corner Cafe is the oldest restaurant on the square. Chris has really, you know, developed a, a unique identity with the Corner Cafe and those sandwiches, I mean, they can't be beat. And if you're wondering why the Corner Cafe has been around so long, here's one good reason. It has spurred an awful lot of growth around the square and downtown in general. You know, another restaurant opened, then another restaurant opened, another restaurant opened, and we have galleries down here, and we have shops and all that are all uh, developing uh, sort of a new age of, of the downtown area. and. Uh, so much of it came from the Corner Cafe and its success. After eating at the oldest restaurant in Carrollton Square, you may want to head to the oldest bookstore in the square. Actually, Horton's Books and Gifts is the oldest bookstore in all of Georgia. And while you're here, you may want to say hi to the resident ghost, Mary Melinda. How you doing, Mary? I'm fine. Yeah. Well, so uh, what, what you're eating? Shh. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. We have a ghost, and we call her Mary Melinda. Mary Melinda was the first wife of N.A. Horton. She stays downstairs, she's not malevolent, but she does move things around, and we've had customers who have experienced her actually moving things while they're down there. She's done a good job keeping the, the, the Barnes and Nobles away from here. Too. Yes, she has. <laughs> Most of your bigger chain bookstores don't have uh, ghosts, and they don't have Chloe the cat either. They're two of our more famous downtown residents and they both live at Horton's. We were uh, founded in 1892. So I sent all the information to the American booksellers and when they celebrated their 100th anniversary in 2000, they sent out a list of the bookstores that were over 100 in the United States. And we were in that list, we were number nine, and we were the only one in Georgia, so we knew <laughs> we were the oldest bookstore in Georgia. So whether you are up for stimulating the mind with a good book, or just your taste buds with a superb sandwich, the town square in Carrollton, Georgia, can offer both and a whole lot more.
Our thanks to Teresa and all our new friends here at the Visitor Information Center. And thank you for joining us on our journey down US 27 in Northwest Georgia. We hope you join us again for Georgia Traveler. Until then, I'm Phil Proctor. I'm David Zelsky. And I'm Keely Muse, wishing you pleasant journeys. Georgia Traveler is made possible in part by Few places on earth match Georgia for natural beauty, and we plan to keep it that way. We're Georgia Power, a proud sponsor of public broadcasting. We're on so you can be Georgia Power, a Southern company. And by supporters of Georgia Public Broadcasting. Thank you. Georgia Traveler is produced in partnership with the Georgia Department of Economic Development and the Georgia Tourism Foundation. This has been a production of Georgia Public Broadcasting.